Oh, welcome to Cool Painter VR. Uh, you may not feel like you have any art ability, uh, but I want to show you that in Cool Painter you can probably create some very pretty computer pictures, um, even if you don't feel like you have a lot of talent. Uh, it just requires one move controller. On that one move controller you have access to all of your tools. And we're going to start uh, with uh, going to the top right button, the triangle, and we're going to click on uh, that uh, menu. I'm going to bring it back down here so we can see. Uh, and we have our brushes. We have a flat brush, we have a round brush, and we have a what's called a liquid brush. Uh, we have um, various shapes and stuff. We're going to be sticking to just the brushes because we're going to be painting. And one of the things we want to do is we want to take off specular. This is the default, which gives your um, strokes a, a shiny surface, which in some cases is good. But we want to go with diffuse so it's not shiny. And we want to load a picture. We're going to load image. And I have several on here, but we're going to go to the rearing horse. And we're going to select that and that's now loading. Uh, so we have the, the this uh, horse here and we want to uh, bring it down a little bit and so a little bit closer so we can see what we are working with here and we're going to use the flat brush so we're going to go into our brushes make sure we got the flat brush selected and we're going to go into our palette and select black. Uh, this is a silhouette we're going to be doing a horse on a um, as you can see a sunset background and the way of painting on a photograph is just basically doing that taking your um, your move controller and moving it over the painting I'm going to work quickly here so there's I may be doing a little less detail than I normally would The uh, <laughs> the undo button gets a lot of use. And we'll just cover that in. The, uh, the paint brush has uh, the sensitivity that when you just barely press it, you get the thinnest line possible. And when you press it the most, you get a very, very thick line. Now, we're going to use a very thick line just to cover a lot of space quickly. And uh, then as we get into more detail, uh, we can go and do a little bit more of a finesse um, using the move controller. This is about as thin a line as you can get right here um, just by barely barely holding down that controller but it gives us what we what we want here and so I'm just going to block that in very very quickly Obviously, you can spend a lot more time with this and get more detail. If you've seen some of the pictures I've done using this technique, you can see that you can get a lot of detail um, if you're willing to take the time to, to spend with it. I'm going to go ahead down here, and that's about as far as I can go before the move controller is going to be out of the range of... Um, the camera so I'm going to go and I'm going to move this up so now I can work on the bottom part of the painting and we're just going to continue to use that brush and fill that in so doing it on the legs now It takes a little bit of finesse to know how hard to pull that trigger to affect the line width. You can start off thick and then you can just let up on the trigger a little bit and have that line become thinner. So we'll just bring that down here and the same thing here. And just add a little bit there. And I think we've got the basic the basic shape of the you can see what I can do there. And we've got the basic shape of the horse. Now we have a, a mane and a tail uh, that we want to put some detail in. And so uh, let's um, I don't want that. 
there's two ways of doing that. One way would be to use this and just putting in some lines like that, but that doesn't really look all that good and it's not really suitable for that. So we have another brush that we can use. Go to our brush menu, uh, the paint menu, and select that round. Um, so this is, whoops, this is what we're doing. We're going to select that one right there. Now this brush gives us finer lines, and you can see, again, right, if you hold down the barely, barely touch the um, trigger, you'll get fine lines. If you hold it down, you'll get thick lines. Uh, so we want to try to do as thin line as we can just by barely touching that trigger and pulling those lines out and we've got some and we've got some mane here that we can I'm just working very very quickly I don't like that one so I don't want to work too quickly all right and we'll work our way down to the uh, bottom here and we'll put We'll put some hair in the mane down here. Make that look a little bit better. And I think we've probably got enough there just for demonstration purposes. So now, let's back up a little bit here and see what we have. And what we have to do now is we need to put in uh, the, well, let's put in the ground. So let's go back to our, uh, our move and move that in to the bottom here. And let's uh, go back to our um, paint menu and select that wide, thick brush. And now, let's see, I just want to get that a little bit closer. And now we'll go and um, put in that, well, we'll put in that um, ground. You can see I'm using the, that brush to give a very, a very thick stroke. And we can do that whole ground in about three strokes just by going across like that. And that's what we're going to do here. All right. Now, how are we going to put in that background, that sky? Well, one way we could do it is we could just take our brush and we could just paint in very, very carefully all of those different colors, which would take us a long time. But I have another technique that we can use, and um, I'm going to show you here. We're going to use the wide brush. We're going to uh, select the, see the colors go from a kind of a, a dark orange um, down to uh, a, a yellow, which is the sunset color. So we're going to go to our menu and our palette, and we're going to pick a nice bright, uh, actually we're going to go a little darker on the orange, a little darker. That seems to match that color pretty well. And so we're going to use this color. Now what we need to do is it's very hard to paint between the paint the picture and our horse. We want to put that behind the horse and the painting that our picture is in the way. So we're going to go to image and we're going to get rid of the painting. Now we can paint behind the horse. And again we'll just uh, draw that in a little closer here and we want to go the full width of the bottom here as much as we can. So we have our our um, brush selected and we're going to want to go behind the horse so we'll start up here and again when I get out of the range of the camera uh, the move controller starts to do weird things but let's go ahead and see if we can get this behind the horse okay we're gonna go all the way over to there and we'll do another one above that give us a little bit more room here and we'll do well, maybe one more behind the horse whoop we didn't go behind the horse uh, we're going to go behind the horse. All right, now let's go to our palette and let's pick a brighter orange. And we'll put that next, going behind the horse. And you'll get a feel for how far you have to go back in order to get behind the horse. And the undo button is there uh, for a purpose. Now let's go where we can see that palette. We want to move this orange thing up a little bit so we're getting a little bit more yellow in there and we'll do one another row here behind the horse and then um, 
We'll do one more. Let's do another one behind the horse, overlapping, so we get color there. <clears throat> now let's move this up to, say, there. Now you can see we got a lot more yellow in there. And again, going behind the horse. We're getting that sky color in there. Now we'll go over here and uh, we're getting closer to the horizon so we're even going to get more and more yellow. I'm going to have to move that up a little bit so I can see a little bit better. And, and now we'll go back to the yellow here. Now we're getting much, much more yellow, getting brighter yellow. Go behind the horse, and we'll do one more, and then we'll finally wind up with our brightest yellow. Well, it didn't quite go behind the horse that time. Let's try that again behind the horse leg here, and with one more ought to do it. We'll put that behind. Whoop! Didn't go quite behind. It's a, uh, it's a little tricky sometimes to get behind there. But all right. Now you can see that in um, some cases where the we have some holes. You might not be able to notice, but uh, I can see there's a hole there. I think I got pretty good coverage. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, just add a little bit more black in there. We can touch up a few places that we that we can see now um, and we'll just take a, a look at that from a distance and I think um, you can see that it looks pretty good for a very very quick painting I think that came out pretty well you've learned some basic techniques and as we continue uh, through these tutorials I'll be doing a little bit more complex pieces each time and uh, as we continue to do this and learning the tools I think that uh, almost anybody can really have fun with cool painter painting pictures that uh, of things that they like uh, animals or seascapes or scenes whatever you want to do um, load that photo in and then begin to just paint over it and this is what uh, you can wind up with so I hope you'll join me again as I continue to do this series of working in cool painter uh, painting from photographs